Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion of what is a relay. And in this video, we're going to focus on DC control relays. As you see here, this is a very common type of uh, device. You can see we've got four relays in one unit. And this is designed so that you can control it from like your Arduino. And it can turn on and off your load using these connector points. And it can handle like 10 amps or more and high voltages. So it's a really nice device if you want to interface your Arduino or any control device with the outside world and turn on high power equipment. So we're going to talk about how these things work. What is all this circuitry? How do you cook it up? And then in the next video, we're going to talk about how to actually control this from your Arduino or from your computer. Um, how to send commands to it and turn it on and off and that kind of thing. So now let's take a look inside each of these blue relay modules you see on this device here and see what's going on. So this basically shows you what's going on inside each of these blue relay modules. We have here a relay coil, a bunch of wire wrapped around a metal core. And basically what you do is you energize this, you apply a voltage to this coil and it turns this metal core into a magnet, an electromagnet. So what does a magnet do? Well, it attracts other metal. So you can see here we've got this arm that's hinged right here. And over here we've got some contacts. And we've got a spring holding this arm. When this coil is not energized, it's not acting like a magnet. And the spring is pulling this arm down, hinged at this point which means that the arm is up here and we've got a set of contacts that are what are called normally closed, NC. When you energize the coil, it now acts like a magnet and it pulls this metal arm. And what happens, it pulls it down and suddenly these normally closed contacts get open. There's an open circuit between them and the normally open contacts become closed. So when the coil has no voltage applied, the spring pulls the arm up. When you energize the coil, it brings the arm down and closes these contacts. So it goes back and forth between these contacts. Now, these set of contacts are what's called Form C contacts, which means there is two sets of contacts, a normally closed contact and a normally open contact. And as you can imagine, there's a Form A and a Form B, which describe only one of these contacts. One normally closed or one normally open. But a Form C has got two sets of contacts, which is really nice because you can specify when the relay coil is de-energized, do you want to have your circuit normally on, which means these contacts are closed, or you can select these contacts and have your circuit normally off when the coil is de-energized. So that's basically what's inside those blue relay modules. Now electrically, as you can imagine, we're going to have to apply, in this case, 5 volts to this relay coil. And this is a big electromagnet. And whenever you hear about applying voltage to a big inductor like this, you should have some alarm bells go off in your head because as we talked about in our series on understanding transformers, applying a voltage to an inductance, an iron core inductance, can cause spikes of currents and voltages. You should get some alarm bells going off, say, hey, if I'm going to apply 5 volts, I might get some current voltage spikes. We need to be careful, especially since we're talking about uh, devices like Arduinos, which really aren't designed to handle high currents and high voltage. So when we do our design of this, we're going to have to be thinking about that. So we've got our 5 volts coming in to energize the coil. And then we've got our normally closed contact. We've got a wire coming down, a normally open contact, and then a common, which is connected to this moving arm. So we're going to expect to have two wires to the coil. And then in this case, for a Form C, we're going to have three wires going to the contacts. Normally open, normally closed, and then a common going to the um, moving arm. Now that we know what's going on inside these um, blue modules, you can see on the output we've got three connectors here, which as you can imagine are these three wires coming from the, the output contacts. And then on the input we've got all of this stuff. 
So let's try to figure out what this might be. And the best way to do this is to try to design it yourself, knowing what you know about these circuits. And then we can go back and see, hey, does it match what we thought it would be? Um, I know a lot of people like to just jump into talking about, oh, this is how it's set up and not really knowing why. Uh, in our case, we're going to try and understand why, and then all of this will make a lot more sense. So if we look at the circuitry, the components feeding the input of these relays, you can see we got a bunch of stuff here. And if you look closely, you can see, hey, for each relay, it looks like the circuits are duplicates. We've got one circuit here, another circuit that's the same, and a third and a fourth. So as you can imagine, there's four duplicate circuits. And if we break down each one, we can have a better understanding. So we've got a device here. It says D2, which tells us, oh, there's a diode here. And then we've got another device, which is a Q2, which means there's a transistor. Aha. Uh -huh. So we've got a transistor here. We've got a couple R's, R3 and R4, which means we've got some resistors. Then we've got this component here with it looks like four legs. And then we've got some in one, two, three, and four. So maybe these are LEDs or lights or something. So if you think about it, we've got a diode, a transistor, some resistors, and this component here, and maybe another diode. And that's about all we've got on the input of these relays. And then the output, we've got that three connectors for the contacts. Um, we also see over here, we've got this jumper. And then we've got the input connectors, let's say ground, VCC, and then in one, two, three, and four. So we're going to have to apply a DC and a ground and figure out what this jumper is. So let's step back and try and design it ourselves, knowing what we know about this. Um, as we mentioned before, when you energize a coil, an inductive coil, an electromagnet, you can get some transient voltage spikes. Now, can the Arduino handle it? If we're going to connect our Arduino to the input of this coil, can it handle the transient voltages that might occur? Probably not. So we're going to have to be careful about that. Also, what is the current required to energize these relay coils? Uh, can the Arduino supply that amount of current? We're going to have to check and make sure because, you know, an Arduino is a control device. But this is more of a power device that's going to require a mechanical coil, electromagnetic coil. So it's going to, we're going to have to make sure we can handle the current. And also, what is the voltage required by the relay to operate? Uh, can the Arduino supply it? Do we want it to supply it? So we're going to have to be thinking about these when we try to design this. So we've got our Arduino and we're going to have to connect it to the circuitry. We're going to have to figure out what output circuits are we going to drive this with? You know, are we going to use the five volts or the three volts coming out of the Arduino to power it? We're going to have to think about that. Now, the control signal to operate the relay will come from an Arduino or similar device, whatever you want to use. Um, but we probably don't want the currents and voltages to come from the Arduino because, again, this is a power circuit. We may want that to come from an external DC supply. So we're going to have to think about that. So if you think about the most basic application of this relay, we've got our coil here and we've got the output contact. The simplest would be to just apply 5 volt DC control signal from the Arduino when it goes high, it energizes the coil, closes the contacts, and this energizes whatever load, a light, or whatever we're going to power with this relay. Now, we said before, I uh, probably don't want this to come from the Arduino. We're going to have to figure out another way to power this coil so it doesn't draw all the current and power from the Arduino. So how are we going to do that? Well, one of the standard ways is to use like a MOSFET or a transistor to drive this coil, which means that you only, for example, would have to apply maybe five volts to the base or gate of this MOSFET or transistor, and it's not going to draw much current. It's just going to turn this device on, and the device can draw the current to energize this coil. So 
We might want to use like a MOSFET or a transistor to drive this and not rely on the Arduino to, to give it all the power it needs. So that's something we're going to have to consider. Now we also said that this is a coil, an inductive coil. When you energize it can generate transient voltage and current spikes. So one thing that's very common is to use a diode, you know, like a Zener diode, that will make sure that the voltage across this coil never exceeds a certain value, because if it does, this diode in reverse mode will conduct and limit the voltage across this coil. So we're going to need some sort of transient voltage protection whenever we're energizing a magnetic coil like this. So we're going to want maybe a MOSFET or a transistor, some sort of transient voltage protection. What else are we going to need? Well, one way to ensure that, for example, our Arduino or whatever control device is electrically isolated from the power part of this, the relays and everything, is to use what's called an optocoupler or an opto-isolator. And that's a really nice device because it only requires that the Arduino can power on this LED and then to drive the coil, it just sends a light in this optocoupler to a transistor inside the optocoupler, which drives the base or gate of this device, which then drives the coil. So there is no electrical connection between the Arduino output and this circuit. So it's a really nice way to completely isolate your control circuit to make sure nothing gets back into the Arduino. So what we'll also want to consider is maybe using some sort of optocoupler device to make sure that we are isolated. Now, another thing we got to figure out, we said, you know, 5 volts DC is going to energize this coil. Do we want the Arduino to have to supply that? Well, maybe not. We're going to have to be very careful to make sure maybe this is requiring more than what the output of the Arduino can handle. So we're going to probably want some way for the user to say, okay, either I'm going to supply all of this output stuff with an external power supply, or if I'm feeling lucky, um, I can power it from the Arduino 5 volt DC. But that's up to you. Uh, we're going to use an external power supply, but you can imagine that we can have like a jumper here that either you can select the external power supply and connect it here and not use the Arduino 5 volts or anything, or we can have a jumper that connects the Arduino 5 volt DC to power all of this relay stuff. So that's up to you. What we're going to do is we're going to use the external power supply to power the um, power hungry stuff. Now, another thing we can consider is if you are powering something that is normally on, say, 24 seven, like a light or some sort of a device that's always on, do you always want the Arduino to be powering the device on by delivering a signal to this optocoupler? Maybe not. Maybe it would be nicer if to make this go on, you can have a low signal coming out of the Arduino because it's nice to have this always low so you're not requiring anything from the Arduino. And the only time you require a high signal from the Arduino is to turn this off. So you might want to think about, you know, is it more efficient to have this normally off to turn your load on? Or if it's only on a short amount of time, it might be better to have a high signal to turn this on, but that's up to you. Um, the way this is defaults to is the Arduino control signal is low to turn this uh, optocoupler on, to turn the relay on, to turn the load on. So keep in mind that we're going to have to feed it a low signal in order to close the contacts, to energize the relay and close the contacts, and power on the load. And that for something that's normally on, that's going to be a lot more efficient. So now if we look at the circuitry, we can start to see if this makes sense. We've got a diode here, and hey, maybe that's this diode, this Zener diode, transient voltage protection across the coil. Now that makes a little bit more sense. What about this device? Well, Q, that's a transistor. Maybe it's this device here that we're using to drive the relay coil. And then we've got this four pin device. Maybe that's the optocoupler that we're using here. And now we know why we've got it. And then we've got this jumper over here that says VCC and JDVCC. 
maybe that's this jumper here. So now this circuitry makes a lot of sense. We've got four duplicate sets of circuitry with a, a Zener transient protection diode, a driver to drive the coil, some resistors, an optocoupler, and these IN1234, maybe they're LEDs that just show us which is energized. And then we've got the input jumper. We've got a ground, we've got a VCC, and the VCC is if we want to power it from the Arduino. And then we've got the IN1, 2, 3, and 4, which is the control signal from the Arduino to power each of the relays. So that's basically what we've got for our circuit. So now let's see if we can find the um, user's manual for this particular relay that we're using. And you can see it's a Songol, and it's an SRD05VDCSLC. Let's go online and see if we can find a manual for it. So here is the manual, Songol Relay, ISO 9000 quality, and main features, switching capacity available, 10 amps in spite of the small size, blah, blah, blah. And applications, appliance, office machine, audio equipment. We've got an SRD and nominal coil voltage 05 we had, and it's an S, which is a sealed type, and a contact form C. And if we look at the coil data chart, SRD, and we've got a high sensitivity, 5 volts. So the nominal current is 71.4 milliamps and a coil resistance of 70 ohms. So if you take 5 volts divided by 70 ohms, you get 71.4 milliamps, right? So when we energize this, we should expect about 70 milliamps of current. Now, if you know anything about the Arduino, you know that they'll talk about 20 or 40 milliamps. So this could be kind of dangerous. And if you're going to energize like four of them at the same time, you might have some problems. So right there we know maybe we should be looking at a separate DC power supply rather than the Arduino. Again, it depends on what your configuration is, but we're going to use a separate DC power supply. Uh, power consumption, 0.36 watts, and this is the maximum allowable voltage, 120% times 5 volts, which means you can go up to like 6 volts. And then we've got some contact ratings, performance, contact resistance, dielectric strength. So that's about it for this um, DC relay. In the next video, we're going to talk about actually hooking this up, using it, and controlling it from our computer using C Sharp or whatever. Uh, controlling it from the Arduino and seeing how that works. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.